Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is indeed drip marketing time. Today is April 22nd, 2024. We are actually reaching the end of Fontaine's arc pretty soon. So there's not too much of a surprise here. We know that Clorand, we know that Sidwin, we know that uh, Emily are three characters that we have not actually got to get yet and newly announced Sethos. So it'll be a handful of those four, maybe two of them, maybe three of them. Let's find out. Got our sick trailer there, our Lakino, and yep, I figured I had, I mean, eventually she had the release. Let's look at the, ooh. Dang, I didn't expect the, the kind of like, you know, <laughs> that, that, uh, that pose. Dang, man. It's been so long since we initially saw her. Let's look at the, the shorter one first. Yeah, looks good. She looks mean. Looks mean. Candle Bear, Shadow Hunter, Champion Duelist. Oh, you know what? The first one was the shorter one. Okay, here we go. Word to the wise, friend. The evidence against you is irrefutable. If you want to uphold your honor, atonement is an option. You can still do much good. There's no need to resort to a duel. I mean, your opponent is Clorand. That Clorand, you hear? Oh, for the love of the Fountain of Lucene, if you go up against her, you'll wind up without even the strength to confess your crimes. Dang. A sincere letter that a certain wealthy merchant... A sincere letter that a certain wealthy merchant who had pleaded not guilty received on the eve of a duel. Oh, so somebody was like, hey, you may not want to do this, buddy. <laughs> like, listen, listen, hear me out. Um, I wonder if it's just like a random merchant or if it's like I don't know like alluding to like Navia's dad or like that guy that Lenny was talking about I don't know but name Clorand title Candle Bear Shadow Hunter hmm. champion duelist vision electro and she's a rapper no constellation is Rapiria Rapiria I'm probably saying that wrong but Rapiria yeah Looks good. I'm a, more of a fan of like when people are in the full shot, like, you know, like from a, a vertical standpoint, this one, she kind of goes off. We'll check the the, J, the JP version because that one usually has like the whole thing. But yeah, let's look at the other one as well. It reads, disputes are Amora, a dozen and Fontaine, day in and day out. A playwright might accuse a fantastical reader of imitating their style and taking up a pen name too close to their own, to the point that even newspapers could not distinguish the genuine article. A merchant might accuse a colleague of targeted, malicious, cutthroat competition, of not only constantly adjusting their prices, but of intentionally setting up shop directly opposite them. Yep. Ordinary disputes can be settled by guards rushing onto the scene, but there are always a minority of claimants, claimants who thinking themselves most clever in the ulterior intent, but obstinately press for court proceeding, proceedings just to get their name out there. And if their dual application were to be approved, they might be famous indeed. However, if some well-meaning neighbor were to tell them, I've heard that most recently rostered champion duelist is Miss Clorin. These same clever folk might almost instantly be deflated of all their arrogant airs, like the violet gold angler gull caught by the neck, and cease and cease such prattle altogether. What are these words? For all for all we well acquainted with the name of the mightiest champion duelist. Beneath her blade, all despicable deeds that aim to capitalize on mere fortune under the guise of decency will show their true colors, and she has never once known defeat in a duel. Wow. No wonder why Charlotte was a fighter. <clears throat> oh, uh, I suppose there's no need to go that far, is there? So does a clever person, very nearly hoisted by their own petard, flee the scene? And thus, it's another such altercation undercut by ulteriority discreetly dissipated. What in the world, guys? What the heck? Come on. 
altercation undercut by ulteriority discreetly dissipated. Jesus. But basically, this just goes to show, don't mess with Chlorin, you know, or not even don't mess with her. But like, you probably don't want to be in a situation where you have to duel in the first place. But if you do, you better make sure it's not Chlorin because you're going to lose. She's never lost. She's like literally a champion duelist, championship duelist for a reason. Literally has never lost. So she's literally never known defeat. So if you got to go up against her, that's bad. And that's typically why, like, you talk about, like, Navia's father and stuff like that. It's, like, it's kind of impossible to win against her, you know? So that's kind of why Chow wanted to fight her, because he was like, man, she's never lost? Like, oh, man, I, I got to try out my skills against her, you know? So champion duelist, they call out that for a reason. But that was Chlorine. Let's see if we got anybody else. I mean, we got to have somebody else. We got to have somebody else. Are you serious? No. Is Sidgwin really going to be in 4.8? Oh, there you go. Okay. There he is. Sethos. Oh, he looks nice, man. He really has that Greek like mythology kind of look to him. You shall have the dexterity of the fox and the agility of the flying serpent. The wisdom of Hermanubius shall also bestow its favor upon you. Your name shall be Sethos, the divination of a priest during a name giving ceremony. So the priest just gave him that name on the spot. There's so many people who don't like have their actual real name. Name, Sethos, title, wisdom's measure, desert envoy, envoy. Yeah, it did say you're going to have the dexterity of a fox and the agility of a flying serpent. I wonder if that actually plays into his kit. But what is he meant to be? Oh, he's a bow user? Hmm, okay. He has the uh, the battle pass bow, I think. He doesn't look like a fox or anything. Hmm. Vision, Electro, and Basilios Delta. Okay. Electro bow. Oh, there you go. There's a full picture there. I'm not sure where it's from, but there's the full picture. It most certainly is a bow user. Okay. Basilios Delta. <laughs> New Sino skin. Nope. No, nope, not, not, not really. He's a whole, he's a whole bow. Sethos, Wisdom's Measure, Desert Envoy. Inexperienced travelers often find themselves trapped by the vast, boundless sea of sand. Were it not for the timely guidance of a kind soul, their journey of exploration might have come to an untimely end, cruelly cut short. But many of those who were lost and returned their companions on the road all had the same upon their lips, the same name upon their lips, Sethos. A great sense of direction, enthusiastic and talkative. These are all common impressions among those who have been on the receiving end of Sethos guidance. And it is quite true, as a, as a desert dweller, Sethos knows the path between the various oases like the back of his hand, and his mastery of techniques and navigation, or of navigation, such as using the sun's position to calculate direction, runs even deeper. As a personal interest, Sethos enjoys traveling by foot between de desert and rainforest, and the navigational skills he's acquired are the, produ are, are the product of his personal experiences doing so. All right, navigator. As for being enthusiastic and talkative, by speaking with Aramites, chance met on the road, or listening to a fascinating uh, anecdotes of hapless scholars rescued from swamp and marsh, not only can he broaden his knowledge and horizons, but also have a lot of fun. For Sethos, that is where the joy of his journey lies. Perhaps it is because of his personality uh, it is because of this personality of his, but regardless of lo locale, from desert to rainforest, he always has those who can be he can regard as friends. One researcher he met at the caravan Rabat, who developed a deep admiration for Sethos, <laughs> Sethos after being struck by his distinctive understanding of the academia and his knowledge system. I'll hate him. Once even went as far to suggest that Sethos 
sit in academia's entrance exam. Be a student at the academia? It would be pretty fun to see how the academia's teachings differ from what the old folks say back home. I'll consider it. Was it Alhatham or was it Tainara, you think? Well, Tainara wouldn't care anymore. He doesn't care about the, care about the academia anymore. But I'd assume I'll hate them. But the caravan were bad. Hmm. I mean, maybe. I mean, we ran into to, to, to I'll hate them over there, so maybe. Yeah, it looks great, man. He gives he like he really gives me like the the dude from Fire Emblem kind of vibe. I forget his name, but he looks very much like him. Um, but it gives a very mature and very just kind of vibe. A lot like a a Bennett, but a lot more lucky <laughs> and uh, more focused, I guess. I don't know. Or like A little bit more grown up. I don't know. Just like that happy-go-lucky kind of guy who knows his stuff and you can depend on, you know? Desert Envoy. Oh, there you go. Right there. Exactly. So we got Clorand and Sethos. I think that my, hey, all right. So we are, we're going big time. This is pretty much it, no? I mean, it's just Emily and that's it. I mean, Emily's the last one. Situine, look at her. Her little gun. <laughs> it's like so colorful. Situine, the most unique out of all the Molesteen friends my parents know. They say that she was a, uh, a guest at our place a long time ago and that she helped my hand. Or, sorry, that she held my hand, supporting me when I had just learned to walk. Oh, many years have passed since then, and I've become an adult. She, on the other hand, is just a meticulous and enthusiastic as ever. Oh, and say, hey, sweet devil. Look at that, Emily. So, she says it's the most unique out of the Muslim friends my parents know. Okay. So, yeah, I wonder, yeah, I wonder, I mean, Emily just owns her own, like, perfume shop and stuff like that so I guess she just like she's still in Fontaine somewhere with her shop Sejuine Wondrous Dragonair hmm. Muslim Head Nurse Hydro and Nerdies okay her daughter with a gun her points ever looking so good yeah she's like so colorful man so I'm I'm just gonna assume based off of like how they look, I'm assuming Sidgeween's the five star, Clarence the five star, and Sethos is the four star, considering his um his introduction. And then it says here the infirmary is the warmest place of the fortress of Meripede. Where the sun falls the sun fails to shine. Rumor has it that the head nurse who manages said infirmary is also its founder. The fortress has changed hands in chaotic circumstances several times over the centuries, but there has always been a tacit agreement among all those who live here not to harm the medical staff in any way. Better not. The reason for this is simple. Few doctors could endure treating criminals and staying in such a place for long. Fewer still would be as clement, cute, contentious, and considerate as Sidgwick. There has once been an inmate whose life Sidgwick saved after being gravely injured while causing trouble. Who then proclaimed her to be the emissary of the heavens, an angel of salvation, sent to bring a redemption to criminals, even saying that he would preach this far and wide on her behalf? That's a bit much, isn't it? The head nurse took the head nurse shook her head, her horns bobbling along. I won't ask for or sorry, I won't ask what you did wrong before saving you, but you still have to finish serving your sentence once you healed up. She said, hands on hips, flattery is not, not getting you anywhere. Who's, who says the opposite of this? No, nah, that, that was like somebody from a different game, but. Sidgween. Sidgween. <laughs> Sidgween was very funny in the, uh, I'd say, what was it? Um, the Archon Quest, it was the third act, I think, or the fourth act. I think it was the third one, when she's looking all evil and she has her gun and she's like, you know, uh, it zooms in on her face and she's like smiling all maniacally. That was like very funny. But um, yeah, if you're wondering where everybody was hiding, it's 4.7. 4.7 is where everybody's hiding at. Um, this was a very weird 
release of the characters. I know Sean Yoon came out in 4.4, which kind of puts everybody a little bit further. But yeah, it's, we got like two new five stars and no four star at all for two, two straight patches. We got Chiori and that was it. And we got Arlequino and that's it for next patch. So 4.7 is actually going to be somewhat you know what? It's going to be kind of nice, too, because now we, we got two again in the same patch. We usually only have two in the beginning. It's usually like, you know, Risley, Nouvellette, or, uh, you know, it was Sino, Nilu, right? So now we're actually getting two, I guess, three new characters, actually. So you're probably excited about Arlequino, but I would go ahead and try and save at least some of those because we got a lot of characters coming up in 4.7. All those hero wits are gone. All that more is going to be gone. It's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be a fun time, though. It's going to be a fun time. I do wonder what they're going to have Sejuin do for her kit because I don't know. Like, I'm thinking of like a healer, but it's like what what have healers already done that you know we haven't gotten yet? So, but yeah, looks great. Everybody looks great. Sethos looks awesome. Clara looks great. Sidrine's adorable. And, um, yeah, that's going to be a lot of leveling and a lot of things to farm next patch. So, so here is the JP version where you can actually see like the full picture here. So it goes all the way down to the bottom. You can see him flooding. <laughs> you got Sidrine full picture. Everybody, everybody has a gun of some kind or a bow. And then Clarence already kind of cut off in it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But but let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Uh, let me know who you are actually anticipating the most for 4.7. Um, it's going to be a pretty jam-packed patch, you know, in terms of its characters at least. So I'm most likely looking forward to Sidrine because I don't know. I'm just so curious about what she's going to be able to do. You know, I mean, healers can only do so much. So I'm curious to see what she's going to be able to do. You know, um, Clarence. I kind of have an idea. I imagine she'll be a DPS. There's been a lot of on-field DPSs in Fontaine. That's kind of been the theme. So I'd imagine she'll just be an on-field DPS. I don't really, you know, nothing else too crazy there. And Sethos is also very interesting too, because it's like, what is he going to do? You know, is he going to be some kind of Sino support or like a Dendro supporter? Or is he going to lean more towards the older era, like the Inazuma era kind of gameplay? Like, you know, what's he going to do? So I'm curious about those two the most. But that'll be all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned. Good luck on your polls tomorrow. And I will catch you guys in the next one.